Welcome participants. Uh, in this session, we are going to talk about the evolution of India's foreign policy, which is like the broad trajectories that Indian foreign policy has traversed in last several decades. Uh, one can see four distinct phases in the evolution of India's foreign policy. The first phase, which uh, started with the British uh, period, uh, the broad, br broadly the foreign policy of India under the British rule. Then the next two three phases which broadly came up in the post-independent period, the first one which started uh, with India's independence in 1947 and entered in 1962. And the, and the third phase which started in 1962 and extended up to 1991 and the last and the current phase which started from 1991. Uh, if you look at uh, Indian foreign policy in the uh, first phase, uh, it, it can be broadly called as Indian foreign policy under British rule. Uh, definitely India was not an independent nation state. It was a quasi-judicial, it was a quasi-legal uh, entity in international relations. Um, uh, to a large extent, India's foreign policy perspectives were reflected by India's national movement and its leadership during this period. One can see that from 1920s onwards, there were references to India's foreign policy perspectives in the discourses of India's national leadership, broadly connected with India's national movement. For instance, uh, in 1921, uh, uh, one of the resolutions of International Congress plenary stated that uh, the, 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 the British government uh, and its opinion no longer represents the, the opinion of Indians. So in that sense, uh, uh, the, the foreign policy of the India's national leadership was almost like a voice away from the British go government vis-a-vis um, uh, -vis the foreign policy matters. Um, uh, to put it simply, International con Congress articulated India's foreign policy at that point in time. The articulation of India's foreign policy during that time was broadly influenced by the notions on anti-colonialism, anti-racialism and so on and so forth. During that particular period, India was broadly sympathizing with uh, the like-minded movements from different parts of the world. For instance, in Ceylon, in Syria, in Egypt, Indonesia, and, and so on and, and so forth. So the uh, broadly, uh, so India's foreign policy perspectives uh, articulated by international Congress um, were actually aimed at sympathizing with the causes of like-minded movements from different parts of the world. This is the period in which India broadly articulated its ideas on, um, on non-alignment, perhaps it came up in 1940s, and subsequently this idea was incorporated into India's foreign policy when India became independent in 1947. Now, if you look at the uh, foreign policy uh, trajectories in the post-independent period. India started off with foreign policy in 1947. There was an emphasis on non-alignment and, and as part of its non-alignment policy, it, it, it started focusing on ideas like global disarmament, solidarity with the third world and, 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 and so on and so forth. Uh, during this period, India used its soft power, non-alignment as a soft power, in order to serve its uh, national interests. Uh, to a large extent, uh, the policy of non-alignment came from both domestic and international factors. Uh, the domestic factors broadly include its economic and, uh, and, and political concerns. And international factors uh, consisted of, um, or international factors came prominently from uh, the, the, the power politics, uh, the Cold War binaries which were prevalent at that point in time. 
Now, to a large extent, the third phase of India's foreign policy, which started off in 1962 and entered in 1991, was shaped by India's own experience with uh, India-China war, in which India was defeated at the hands of the Chinese. Uh, to a large extent, there was uh, question. Uh, there were questions. There were interrogations on the emphasis on non-alignment. In in that sense, one can say that non-alignment was broadly questioned in this period. As a consequence of it, there was an emphasis on national security. India went into a national security infrastructure building in this period. For instance, the, the establishment of various intelligence agencies, joint armed commands, and, and so on and so forth. Similarly, India went nuclear in 1974. India was also looking at, India was also trying to um, uh, uh, to respond to the power alliances which were uh, created at that point in time as part of the Cold War binaries and also uh, by Indian, India's adverse powers like India, uh, adverse powers like Pakistan and China uh, during that period. So India's concern was mostly to build national, infra national uh, security infrastructure on the one hand and also to develop the counter strategies to uh, to to deal with uh, the adverse powers in the system so one can see that india was getting into alliances with uh, countries uh, such as soviet union through indo soviet friendship treaty in 1971 uh, in order to uh, counterbalance uh, the the emerging power uh, binaries on the other side, or power alliances on the other side, such as Pakistan, China, US axis. Another important uh, uh, phase of, in India's foreign policy evolution uh, began in 1991. And this particular period actually had a certain broad um, characteristics. Um, this was a period in which India st started off with its economic reforms in a big way. Therefore, there was a certain kind of restructuring on the characteristics or the priorities of the foreign policy which India followed in the previous periods. For instance, there was, an, there was a de-emphasis on the policy of non-alignment. There was multi-directional engagement with major powers such as US, European Union and Japan. This was also the time in which India was trying to build new uh, alliances or in the sense India was trying to break new pathways. For instance, its relations with South Africa, Israel and so on, which were never represented in India's foreign policy uh, discourses in the past and India was also trying to build a, a new regional organization in that sense there was a new dynamism in regionalism in that in in the in the period after 1991 there was large-scale emphasis on building new alliances such as BRICS uh, India Brazil South Africa Alliance uh, BIMSTEC Indian Ocean Rim Association for Regional Cooperation India and Shanghai Cooperation Organization and so on and so forth. So while looking at the trajectories of India's foreign policy uh, till date, one can see, one can say that there were certain kind of uh, trends uh, in the foreign policy which actually defined the status of India in international relations. To a large extent, there was an inconsistency for its status in international relations uh, before 1991. And there are some structural reasons for that status inconsistency for, the, for India in this period. This can be due to several factors. One of the prominent factors is 
lack of say in United Nations and other international institutions like World Bank, IMF and so on and so forth. There was also a technological regime, technological denial regimes at the international level which were operating against the interest of India. Another important aspect for the status inconsistency for India was uh, a, a kind of economic isolation in the sense that the economic models that India followed uh, made it to be isolated from the uh, international economic system. And uh, another important uh, reason for the status consistency of India was an overt emphasis on soft power rather than on hard power. So in this particular section, we have broadly talked about various phases in the evolution of India's foreign policy, starting with the foreign policy of or foreign policy uh, vision of Indian leadership in the pre-independent period, broadly under the British period. Then we talked about India's foreign policy in the post-independent period, the first phase of the post-independent period, which started with 1947 and entered in 1962, where there was an emphasis on the policy of non-alignment. Then we talked about India's foreign policy in the third phase, which started with 1962 and, and lasted up to 1991. During this period, there was a, a kind of questioning or interrogation of India's most important foreign policy uh, uh, emphasis, uh, which was uh, non-alignment. Then we have looked at how India's foreign policy have changed in the post-Cold War period uh, to uh, de-emphasis on uh, non-alignment and how a multi-directional engagement uh, came up in foreign policy um, vis a -vis its relations with major powers like US, uh, EU and Japan and we have also looked at uh, uh, another trend which was a renewed dynamism in regionalism and also uh, India's, uh, strat India's position to uh, break new pathways in international relations, for instance its relations with countries like Israel and South Africa. Dear participants, um, uh, now let's conclude uh, the session. Um, we have discussed uh, various approaches to understand India's foreign policy, which were broadly um, revolved around uh, uh, the notion of sovereignty, alliances, power distribution, uh, conflict uh, on political ideas and domestic policy politics. We have also looked at the trajectory or trajectories through which Indian foreign policy has traversed uh, since pre-independent days to the present times. Um, we have seen uh, different uh, stages in which uh, the foreign policy have, have uh, come up and, and, and the trends associated with it. And, and in the contemporary times, uh, India has emerged as a major power in the global arena, um, especially in, in, in the post-Cold War period. Um, one can say that India, a country which followed uh, idealistic orientation in its foreign policy, turned pragmatic and caught and uncaught in the post-Cold War period. Um, India, India broadly redefined the policy of non-alignment and involved with major powers through multi-directional engagement while uh, breaking uh, new pathways. Uh, economic uh, aspects has begun to take center stage in India's external relations in the contemporary period. The macroeconomic growth and nuclearization have strengthened India's position in the present world order, while India faces 
um, challenges such as economic disparity, social exclusivity, and some kind of political unrest uh, and so on in the domestic arena.